Eves Smith called Tylenol Could Be Risky for Pregnant Women, a new review of 25 years of research finds acetaminophen may contribute to ADHD and other developmental disorders in children. Give me my screen back for just a second, Zach, so that I can pull up the actual article which this person uh, who is one of the lead authors on the article Actually, is referring is, to. It is Ann Bauer who is the lead author on the article. It's confusing the way this is written. It's not Eve Smith, but it doesn't, doesn't much matter. Oh, you're, yeah. This person is not in the... Uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Okay. So here's the article in... Boy, what is it published in? Nature Reviews Endocrinology. Consensus statement. Paracetamol use during pregnancy, a call for precautionary action. So we're just going to read one, the, the opening paragraph of the introduction, and then show the two figures before we talk about this a little bit. A growing body of experimental and epidemiological research suggests that prenatal exposure to paracetamol, that's N-acetyl-P-aminophenol, APAP, otherwise known as acetaminophen, otherwise known as Tylenol, might alter fetal development, which could in turn increase the risks of certain neurodevelopmental, reproductive, and urogenital disorders. Okay, and then they, they do this review, and here are the two figures which are um, a, a good view in here. Figure one, associations between prenatal tylenol, tylenol exposure, reproductive and neurobehavioral development suggest, suggested from observational human studies, so um, it's not uh, ethical to do experiments on humans. It's generally understood um, with something that is considered to be potentially a risk. So this is purely observational studies, uh, but Tylenol exposure in pregnancy um, can lead to genital malformations in boys, uh, in, in neonates, in childhood, an increase in ADHD, autism, hyperactivity, behavioral difficulties, and lower IQ and language capabilities in girls, and in adolescence and adulthood, uh, can increase the rate of early puberty onset in girls. And then we have in animal studies, uh, figure two, just next page, um, when exposed to, to Tylenol, we have uh, lower rates of steroidogenesis and of germ cells, uh, which is likely to uh, decrease fertility, increase in DNA damage in juveniles, lowered rates of cognitive performance in boys, of locomotion in girls, or higher, higher rates of locomotion in girls. That's interesting. Probably higher activity, lower motor skills, lower spatial learning. And then in adulthood, we have um, fertility problems, increase in uh, male sexual behavior, lowering, lowering of social behavior and learning in memory and habituation. So all sorts of known effects of early exposure to Tylenol, which the authors also say is understood to be one of the absolutely safest drugs on the market and is widely um, recommended to pregnant women uh, because um, so many other things like NSAIDs um, are understood to have risks. Um, and one more thing before before you start, Brett, one of the things that, that they also point out is that Tylenol, acetaminophen, is a background drug in a vast majority of other drugs. So, you know, most of, many of, I don't know most, many of the opiates that people would get prescribed for pain uh, have acetaminophen in them as, as one of the ingredients. And in fact, um, some amount of um, opiate poisoning uh, is likely to be Tylenol poisoning. Yes, um, because the opiates are addictive and uh, the Tylenol is actually quite toxic, which is something you and I have talked about on this program. Specifically I think we with regard to in concert with drinking alcohol. It's especially, it, apparently alcohol changes the pathway through which Tylenol is broken down in the liver into a more, one with a toxic byproduct, I believe is the analysis. And so absent alcohol, it's less dangerous, but even absent alcohol, it's extremely toxic, yeah. right? So uh, Eve Smith, who wrote the Naked Capitalism article that calls attention to the Ann Bauer article that you were just citing. Mm -hmm. uh, says that effectively, she says, uh, I must confess that one reason I am running this piece is that I have long and loudly maintained that acetaminophen, aka Tylenol, is too dangerous to be sold over the counter. Less than two times the recommended dose level is considered toxic. Mind you, its dangers have been known for decades. And she cites a 2004 article that says, acetaminophen overdose is a leading cause 
for calls to poison control centers, over 100,000 a year, and accounts for more than 56,000 emergency room visits, 2,600 hospitalizations, and an estimated 458 deaths due to acute liver failure each year. That's in the U.S.? So. Uh, I believe that is in mm -hmm. the U.S. Now, I looked into it a little bit. Those so, are really extraordinary numbers. Yes, they are really extraordinary numbers. Now, I was aware of the toxicity of it. And my mm -hmm. thought, and I think what I've in fact said, which I am now revising, is that the thing about Tylenol is it's very toxic, but at least we know what the toxicity is. It's liver mm -hmm. toxicity, which you can afford. Yep. Right? I, think, I think we both said that. Yeah. Right. This doesn't suggest that at all. The liver toxicity thing is very serious, but what uh, you were just talking about, all of these effects on um, pregnant women and fetuses. And development of the children that then result. Right. Uh, that's obviously a whole different level of hazard. Now, what's interesting is in preparation for talking about this, I started, I just really went after the date of the invention of uh, paracetamol, acetaminophen, Tylenol, all the same thing. Yeah. And I was shocked at how far back it goes, right? First synthesized in 1877. Apparently. Really? Yes. Um, 1877 as a replacement for a, a very dangerous drug, but apparently it has been beset by concerns over safety for the entire period from 1877. 1877. I was That's amazed crazy. at that myself. Yeah. Um, from 1877 up through 1950 is where it is understood to be safe enough to use, but still major concerns about safety until in the 70s it overtakes aspirin, right? And mm. it starts to be understood to be the safe alternative and recommended uh, very casually to people for any sort of pain they may have. Well, I don't know. I don't know my history of drug development here at all, but I don't know, or drug development and understanding of toxic effects, but you know, Ray's syndrome, um, about which every modern American, at least parent, is going to be familiar with because you are told the point that you're you're pregnant, okay, you, you absolutely must not give children under 18. I think it is aspirin because Ray's syndrome. So I, want, you know, I wonder if that overtaking um, by Tylenol of aspirin in terms of uh, its its prevalence in use as sort of a over the counter pain relief might have coincided with a recognition um, that aspirin actually had toxicity for young children. Um, yes, I think this is strongly likely. I would point out that based on you know a composite of what we that is to say you and I now know about the various drugs available. Mm -hmm. um, what are the safe alternatives for children and pregnant women? Well, there probably aren't any, right? This seems to suggest that Tylenol has significant hazards, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Significant hazards for development. The uh, NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, carry risk to the heart. Mm -hmm. Aspirin carries the risk of RISE syndrome or RAISE syndrome, I however, don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> however you pronounce yeah. it. You know, ironically, if I had to guess based mm -hmm. on what we understand about these molecules, I would guess that the opiates are likely to be the safest. Now, they obviously have an addictive danger, mm -hmm. right? And an overdose danger and all sorts of stuff like yep. that. But, but with, without all the fillers taken in extreme moderation, um, in part because they are actually or are closely mimicking molecules that we are already producing and therefore our bodies have an ability to break them down safely. Exactly. So is that logic bomb proof? No. no There's lots of room, you know, no. you can add a hydrogen and change uh, a molecule from a benign one to a toxin. But but the fact is the chances of it being safer are pretty high, right? Yeah. Which doesn't tell you what to do about the addictive problem. Obviously that kills a tremendous number of people, especially if you have uh, drug companies uh, cryptically profiting from an epidemic of addiction. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever, I guess the point is, look, if you really understood the story of Tylenol, it's a story of toxicity from the beginning. And it's a story of our changing perceptions and changing understanding and how that interfaces with what's available to us over the counter. Would it be, you know, would a good system ever have declared it safe enough? I don't know, but you know, it's, I certainly have always found it odd that it exists in NyQuil in combination with alcohol. Yeah. Right? Like, 
if what we understand about alcohol affecting the metabolism of Tylenol is true, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, frankly, the- Well, you'll poison yourself, but at least you'll sleep well. <laughs> right, I guess. Uh, all right. So anyway, it's a very interesting uh, puzzle. We should put the links, of course, to the yep. Naked Capitalism article and the article that it cites, which you've mm -hmm. shown the figures from in the description. People can look into it further. 